Remember on the lab practical, you will be responsible for understanding a few origin, insertion, and actions. Recall from your reading that origin is the point of attachment um, that doesn't move when that muscle contracts, while the insertion does move, and the action, of course, is just what the muscle does. And so we'll go through a few here on these human models, and hopefully that will help you a little bit on the lab practical. And so I'll just try to follow along with the manual so you know which ones to look at. The pectoralis major, here this muscle, the origin is the clavicle, sternum, and then ribs two to six. So some of that you can't see on this model, but that's the origin. And so when this muscle contracts, right, it has to have that anchoring point. And so we'd find that in this direction. Whereas the insertion, if we moved all the way over here, would be the tubercle of the humerus, which of course is removed in this model. The action would be to flex, adduct, so bring toward midline, and rotate that arm medially. And so you, hopefully you can kind of picture that. The pectoralis minor is underneath the major in the human model, its origin being ribs three to five. And then of course the insertion is the coracoid process of the scapula, which would be underneath these muscles here. If you can remember when we learned the skeletal muscles, the action would be to depress, to depress the scapula and then rotate that shoulder joint anteriorly. Here, it's removed on the human model, but maybe you could picture the rectus abdominis that we dissected, those middle muscles, the six pack, we called them. The origin would be the pubic crest, and the insertion being the cartilage at ribs five through seven and the xiphoid process. And so the action would be to flex the trunk. We've talked about, when you think about these actions, muscles can't push, they pull, for the most part, pull. And so there has to be um, an opposite muscle or antagonist that would perform the opposite action if they were able to do so. But in this case, the uh, abdominal muscles flex. Going up to the sternocleidomastoid, we've talked about how that is attached at the sternum. The clido stands for clavicle and the mastoid process of the skull. The sternocleidomastoid, the origin is the manubrium and clavicle. And the insertion is the mastoid process. And so the words are there in the name. And the action itself is to flex the neck. We demonstrated that in lab when we moved our heads back and forth. Going up to the masseter, I like this one because it is easiest. We've talked about the action being closing the jaw, not opening. You know, that is, that's some of these muscles here, but closes the jaw. The origin being the zygomatic arch in the insertion here being the ramus of the mandible. And so this goes back, you have to remember some of those portions of the skeletal muscle, or I'm sorry, of the skeletal system that we went over. You can't really see it on this model, so I'll take a break here and then we'll come back and look at the muscles on the... This large muscle group here, triceps brachii, with the three heads, the origin is going to be the scapula, or at least that's what we're calling it for lab, just the scapula is all you have to know, and the shaft of the humerus, which would be under the deltoid. And so the origin would be under the deltoid. So if I remove the humerus, you can see that here, under the deltoid. The insertion itself on the triceps is the olecranon process. And so that would be down here, if you recall. And the action of that is going to extend the forearm. We talked about how if you learn the actions in the compartments, so the posterior arm and posterior forearm both extend, extend the arm, extend the digits. And so these here extend the forearm. The biceps brachii here above, the origin is the coracoid process. And so if we looked over here onto the scapula, the coracoid process, the insertion being the radial tuberosity, and the action is to flex the arm. We said the muscles in the anterior compartment are the flexors. And so flex the forearm. The biceps can also, in some mechanism, supinate the forearm. And so we talked about pronate versus supinate. What's for supper? Or I want a bowl of soup, however you learned that in your class. But that is re uh, the biceps is responsible for some of that action. The brachialis is actually going to be underneath the biceps. So we wouldn't be able to ask it for bonus. But just to show you here, the brachialis muscle. Oh, sorry about that. The brachialis muscle. And so... Um, underneath 
again, not much we need to know about that um, on the human model. The deltoid here on the shoulder, again, a really important muscle for you nurses and pre-meds to know, especially when you're discussing where to give your injections, your intramuscular injections. But the deltoid has an insertion with the clavicle. So if we looked on the human model with the clavicle, here's the deltoid. It also has, I said insertion, I'm sorry, an origin um, because this portion wouldn't move. And so when that muscle contracts, you're also gonna find an origin on the acromion process of the scapula and then the spine of the scapula. If we could see that deltoid, where that origin attachment would be. Insertion is gonna be the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. We talked a bit about that in lab and lecture, how that we can have that larger deltoid tuberosity if you're in cross country and throwing the disc or javelin or something. The action of course would be to abduct and so move away from midline, abduct the arm. With the trapezius muscle, some of this is cut away on the human model, but we know one of the uh, points of origin is the external occipital protuberance, as well as some of your vertebrae. And so if you look at the spines of C7 all the way down to T12, we'd find an origin of the trapezius, points of attachment that do not move when that muscle contracts. Now the insertion, the point that would move, would be the clavicle, so on this side, your collarbone, clavicle, the acromion process of the scapula, and the spine of the scapula. You can see that here. So this portion would move. And so if this contracted, think of all that it can do. And so what you're seeing here with this trapezius is when these muscles contract, you're shrugging your shoulders. And so this portion would move, this portion would move to shrug the shoulders.